everyone welcome back to another video so glad you could join me today and if you're new welcome to the channel i hope you stick around for a bit so i like to start off with a basic sketch in red and then i go over with black when i'm sure i've added in all the details that i need to so while i'm doing that i'd like to tell you about the art prompt surrounding this drawing i released the art prompt last month uh, on my Instagram channel and it was called Tamer of Great Beasts. I did come up with the art prompt myself and it was my very first so be sure to expect more in the future. I will admit when I made the art prompt that this wasn't the idea that came into my head. The first one was with a, a dragon in the background and you have this girl wearing armor in the, f in the foreground. But I changed my mind when I realized that it didn't really tell a story. It wasn't really catchy. So that's when I came up with this idea where you have the dragon with his mouth open looking down at the, the dragon tamer or the hunter or just a traveler perhaps. I'm not sure. The idea is really endless. And I thought that it was more catchy that way as well. It's, it just tells more of a story. I don't know, this is one of my first drawings doing this. My other ones don't really have this kind of aesthetic. So this is a new experience for me as well. Because this is a new style of art for me, I do want to continue doing the art prompt. So I'll be sure to release more every month on my Instagram. And I will also tell you about the new art prompt after the video if you want to stick around until then. So in the meantime, I am just busy outlining uh, the drawing which I put in. I have, I am going ahead and changing, I did go ahead and change the back teeth over there because I wasn't quite happy with how they looked. And I feel like I could do that while I was doing the drawing because there's nothing wrong with it. Whenever I sketch, it's just like a basic sketch and then I do like to go ahead and take things I don't like out. So you'll probably see me doing that quite a bit during the video. So now I'm just going ahead and outlining the dragon.
now that I'm done outlining the background and the dragon, I now move on to making our man. I do like to use the Clip Studio figures just because it makes the process easier and a little faster when I don't want to put too much detail into it. So right now I just formed him into the position I wanted and now I'm just outlining with black. Now that I'm done outlining our figure, I go ahead and add a cape into it. I like to add the cape in because it kind of gives a feeling of wind, just like another element to the to the drawing. I don't put too much detail in that. Now that I've finished outlining everything, I just go ahead and give everything a base colour just to give a drawing a 3D effect before I begin. And I also go ahead and delete the unnecessary black lines. Depending where everything is in the drawing, I like to give everything a different shade depending on whether it's in the foreground or in the background. So as you can see I did give uh, our adventurer and the rock faces different colours because some of them are closer than others. And I gave the dragon a different shade because I wanted it to be a base blue just so when I put down the base colours I already have the colour I want in place. So now I'm going ahead and just blocking in the colours before I actually begin putting in details because this makes that process easier as well. It's something I've been doing for a while so that's kind of my technique. Also when I'm blocking in colour another thing I tend to do is stick with the mid-tone with the colour I would like to use when using the putting in detail. It helps me stay in the right colour base and also when I go in with detail I just select the colour and then I use the colour wheel to go to a lighter tone or a darker tone. It helps a lot when you just want to select the colour quickly and just pick a colour in that gradient. And also over here you can see I'm just going ahead and adding in some more detail to the eyes. Another thing I tend to do when blocking in colours is going ahead and putting some different parts of what I'm working on on different layers. So if I do ever have to go back and maybe delete, let's say, the gums of the dragon here, I can just go ahead and select that layer and delete it and then start again without having to delete the entirety of the mouth. It's just something I've been doing for a while and it's really helped uh, keep everything neat and tidy and also it's a lot less stressful that way as well. So I'm going to go ahead and finish blocking in all the colour with the dragon, the environment and our adventurer and then I'm going to start putting in detail. Now just going ahead and blocking in the lighter and darker segments of the rocks. Just so later on when I go ahead and put some more detail in I have a basic shading. And I also did the same for the background behind the dragon. And I used the hue and saturation to change the colour. 
I am now working on our adventurous cape just going ahead and adding in the lights and darks as you can see I'm using a few different tones I'm adding in some oranges and slight pinks to the red I also chose a red color because I thought it stood out compared to like the dark blue colors of the background and the dragon I am now just going ahead and blending out and using the hue and saturation just to adjust the color to my liking and I also went ahead and smoothed out the rocks I am now going ahead and adding in the fog in the background just so the background behind the dragon doesn't look too plain and I'm also going to add it in the foreground surrounding our dragon and our hunter with the rocks as well I thought it was kind of cool to add the fog in because it adds in an ominous effect to the drawing just having the dragon emerge from the darkness and really just having his jaws and his face visible was kind of a cool uh, feeling so I did I went ahead and did that as you can see I am now all working on the mouth just shading in the teeth Also another thing, going ahead and uh, just shading in the background as well helps me pick the right areas to put my light and darks in with the rest of the body. It makes it a little easier because I know where my light source is coming from. Whenever I start a drawing I do tend to always begin with the background because it always helps to have a light source to work with and it makes the process for the rest of the drawing easier. Being that I already have the colours blocked in, I am now just going to go ahead and add in my darks and lights with the rest of the dragon. Since I made the eyes of the dragon red, I thought it would be kind of cool to have this glow effect come off of them. So that's what I'm doing right now. This wasn't really my idea when I started the drawing, so it was kind of a spontaneous idea I came up with in the moment. When, I was, when I'm doing this, I do use the same colors from the eyes, so they do kind of link up. And I use a liquify tool just to pull them out so they kind of blend into the fog. Now that I've finished doing the eyes, I continue working on the rest of the dragon mouth. Since I put everything on a different layer, like I told you earlier, I don't have to be cautious about maybe painting over the dragon teeth or the tongue because 
I have everything on a separate layer and there's a lock tool which you can use to lock everything into place so you don't draw outside of the layer you have selected. Now that I'm basically finished with everything else with the dragon, I go ahead and pick a light blue and a dark blue of its skin and then I go ahead and put that in the necessary places. And now I'm quickly put showing you how I do the scales. So I typically work from the darkest colour and then I work to, out to the lightest. Each scale has just a small fragment of it that just has a tiny bit of white or maybe just the lightest bit of blue. And as you can see I did do a time skip where I went ahead and drew the rest of the scales of the dragon behind the scenes just because uh, that's quite a long process and I didn't really want to bore you. So now I'm going ahead and quickly finishing up the horns. Now that that's finished, I am now working on the rest of the environment. Just going ahead and doing the rocks. As you can see here, I do go ahead and select our adventurer and just copy him and flip him over and I do use some black to link up the legs to each other because I do want to turn this into a shadow. So I just bring the hue and saturation down just a tad and I also colour it in grey. So as you can see against the rocks, it does look like a shadow coming out behind our adventurer. Next, I go ahead and just shade the skin under the dragon scales and because I do have that reflective orange light coming off of the dragon's eyes, I do go ahead and add some orange tint to the skin just to add more lighting in and more effect. The next thing I move on to is the flames. 
This was a bit of a spontaneous idea, but I thought it added to the effects which I was going for with the adventurer coming across this giant dragon looming out of the mist. So I thought flames also would add in a really nice light source and a threatening figure too. Fun fact, this is actually the first time I've drawn fire. I'm really surprised with how well it came out and how realistic it looks. I do believe I could probably do better in the future, but for my first attempt, I'm really happy with how it came out. Also, as you can see, I'm going ahead and deleting the black lines and some of the shading, just so it looks like the fire is covering the scales and coming out of the corner of the dragon's mouth. It just gives it a more realistic look. I'm also going ahead and removing the fire from between the teeth. And also now that I've got a really strong uh, light source, I'm just going ahead and adding in orange tints onto the rocks and the rest of the dragon because it gives it a more realistic feel. I will also go ahead and do the same with the fog. I do go over with the oranges quite a few times and I add in a few tints of yellow just to add some extra effects and I really like the results as well. It looks like the flames are really reflecting off of the rocks. And I also add a fine yellow rim around our adventurer just so it looks like the fire is reflecting off of him and his cape. Now that we're coming to the end of the video, I'd really like to tell you about this month's art prompt. So the prompt is swift. Feel free to take part and make whatever idea comes to your head at the mention of the word swift. And if you really like to show me what you made, feel free to go onto Instagram and look for me under the name Creative Phoenix Art. There you will see my art prompt on my wall. And I'll also have the link to my Instagram uh, in the description down below. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope I'll see you again next time. Have a lovely day until then. Bye!